Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. We're going to jump into QuickBooks Online today. We're going to talk through a really specific question I get all the time, which is how do you measure profitability for your real estate projects, whether they be rehabs or rental properties within QuickBooks? Do we use classes and class tracking or do we use the customer field? I'm going to talk about that specific question today. You've probably seen videos of me doing both strategies, both have their pros and cons, and I'm going to talk through that today so that you can have the information you need to do what's right for your business. Okay, so getting into QuickBooks here, again, let's talk about the two different ways we can track. And I would say probably the most common way to track is by customer. Okay, so what does that mean? You have customers within QuickBooks, and you can set up for your, your customers a list of properties. All right, now it doesn't logically, you know, intuitively make sense that my customers are my properties, but the reason we can do it this way is that um, QuickBooks gives us unlimited customers and gives us sub-customers and there's just a lot of flexibility with it. So if I were to go into this customer, which is 123 Main Street, you can see that I have an invoice here. Okay. And that happens to be for a specific person called Wendell Johnson. Okay, so this would be on the sales side where I'm tracking rental uh, sales for that customer. Now I can also have expenses for that customer. So if I hit this plus button and hit an expense, I can say that I spent money on maybe like um, utilities. Uh, let's see here, do I have like gas in there? Actually I don't. Oh, that's because I'm in products and services. I want to go to the other categories here. All right, so maybe I got a bill for the electric and it was 122 bucks. And here I will put in my customer, which is 123 Main Street. Okay, save and close that. Let's just add one more just for fun here. Let's do another expense and let's do this one for repairs and maintenance. You know, fix hot water tank and this was $545. And that was for 123 Main Street. Now notice I'm putting it to 123 Main Street at the parent level, not at the sub-customer level, which is the actual human being who is my tenant. All right, save and close that. Okay, so now what I could do is I can go to a report and I can pull my profit and loss. And let me do this for this whole, let's just do all dates. All right, so here's a profit and loss. I could customize this to filter by customer and to only show me 123 Main Street. Now I'm going to need to click this one too because my invoices are at the sub level. Okay, and so now here's a profit and loss for just that property. Okay, where I'm losing money, but that's fine for just that property. Now the other thing you can do with this is if I were to turn off this filter, I could display the columns by customer as well. Okay, and so here's 123 Main Street and then here's Wendell who is an actual tenant of mine and then here's the total for 123 Main Street. And you can see 34 long is kind of the same here. 34 long is a rehab. What I would do with that is kind of filter out my rehabs from my rentals. Right? And that kind of gets us to classes. But before we get to classes, a few other points on customers. Okay, So customers is a single field that has parent and then sub levels. Okay? So if we go to our customers, you can see 123 Main Street and then Wendell Johnson. The other thing that's cool about customers, if you're paying for QuickBooks Online Plus, you have the use of projects, okay? Projects are relatively new within QuickBooks and it's kind of a way to manage a start and end date project. So it's really great for those of you who are doing rehabs. Even if you're not doing rehabs, it's good for rental properties if you're doing a project within that rental property. You would pretty much create a sub-customer project for a renovation as I did here for 123 Main Street. And it's got this cool portal that really didn't exist before. Now you need to be using customers to use projects because if I go to add a project here, or actually, actually if I go to my projects and I go to create a new one, the first question it's gonna ask me, first, what's the project name? 
The second question is who is a customer? And if it's not here, I can't do it. It always needs to be a sub customer of an existing one. So you can't really make use of projects unless you're using customers, okay? So that's how customers work. Now, you've probably seen some videos of mine where I use classes, okay? Now, with classes, a few things. First of all, classes are only available QuickBooks Online Plus and above. And the second thing is QuickBooks started to limit our use of classes. Before I get into that limit, let's turn on classes. Now, when I go to add an expense, you'll notice that the only fields I have are customer and project, and that's kind of it. I need to turn on classes to use it. Okay, so I can go to my settings here, and go to accounts and settings, and then I'll go to advanced, and uh, let's see here, categories. Okay, so track classes, I can turn that on, and one for each row of transaction. I like that. Okay, and done. Okay, now when I go to add an expense, not only do I have the customer project, but I also have a class field here. Okay, so I can do that same where I was tracking electricity. Instead of putting the customer project, I could put a class of 123 Main Street. Now, why would you do this? Well, the reason to potentially do this is so that you can report on this project without anything for the customer. If you were to do it this way, your customers would just be those who are receiving your invoices, your tenants. Okay, so just be like Wendell. Now, electricity, if I'm paying for it, that would not be applicable to them. But if it was something where I paid for it and I needed to bill it to them, I would mark it as billable and I can do it to them there. I could kind of use both, okay? So classes are cool for that reason. Now here's, here's the problem with classes. If I save and close this, I'll just do this. And actually, let me add one more expense for a different class. And this is gonna be for repairs. I'm going to do this one for 34 long. I'll just show you the reporting on this side. If I go to reports, profit and loss, and then let's go all dates. Now if I display columns by classes, you're going to see that a couple of my transactions, the two that I just put in, are attributed to the right property. And then all the rest of my transactions, I'd probably have to go back and adjust them so that they can be to the right property. Classes is nice because you don't necessarily need like the sub accounts. You saw that when I had the, the customer, if I do this by customer, unfortunately there's no way to just give me the total, which I think is the biggest shortcoming of the customer method. If they did, then this wouldn't be so muddled and I'd, I'd like it a lot better. Um, with classes, it, it could potentially be a little bit neater, okay? But again, here's the restriction with classes. So I, I mentioned usage limits. So if I go to uh, my accounts and settings, there's a tab over here that's called usage. Again, this is new since QuickBooks Online Plus started limiting it. So first of all, here's my billable users. I have five included, I'm using three. Chart of accounts, they give you 250, I'm using 36. My philosophy is that if you're coming close to the limit on chart of accounts, you're not doing it right. There's no reason for a real estate investor to have anywhere close to that number. We can keep things generic and we don't need to be that, that high. So if you have questions on that, I'm happy to help you sort that out. And then down here, classes and locations, I'm using two of 40. Okay, so think about that. If I have 40 properties, it's over, right? And if you're doing rehabs, you know, rehabs and rentals, you, you can get to that limit pretty quickly. So that's the biggest limitation to classes and locations right here. The other part, of course, is that if you don't wanna pay for plus, which is the only way to get classes, if you're in essentials or simple start, you can still use the customer methodology. Okay, so here is, if I were to sum it up, I think that the best way to 
handle differentiating profit and loss by property is to use customers. I think that's the most um, you know, sustainable way to do it. Um, it does have its limits with reporting that I bet you they're gonna fix soon, okay? And um, again, you can use this without being on plus. I would recommend using classes to more define the different areas of business within uh, your company. So for example, maybe you have a class for rental properties and maybe a class for rehab properties, maybe a class for wholesale. And then you can pull profit and loss by those different divisions of businesses. And then you have, you have multiple dimensions to pull your profit and loss report, right? You have by customer, which is your project. Then you have by um, profit center. And you can kind of do a bunch of manipulating of those reports to really see the key financials that you need, okay? So again, this is a pretty common question I get. And again, my current philosophy is to use customers because it's unlimited, because we can use projects, because you can use it if you're not on plus. I think those are the best reasons. Um, if, you, if you just have a few rental properties, go ahead and use classes, that's okay. Uh, we can always reclassify later if you grow to a point where you're, you're beyond the limits. Alrighty, so hopefully that clarifies it a little bit. If you still have questions about it or have a specific situation that you'd like me to go over, feel free to put it in the comments there or email directly at nick at and we can talk it through. All right, we'll see you on the next video.